Hey, what's up guys? Let's check everything new in Indie5 Render 2.5. There are a lot of new and awesome features that I'd like to share with you today. Let's start with number one, real-time caustics. First of all, what are caustics and why is it a big thing to have them working in real time? Caustics is when light hits a shiny or see-through object like water or glass and then creates bright patterns or spots on other surfaces. Think about how sunlight shines through a swimming pool and makes those wiggly light patterns on the bottom. Those wiggly patterns are caustics. This is extremely costly to a computer to simulate and usually takes extra hours of render time just to render this effect. So having them in real time is really a big thing now. To enable this new feature, you need to have caustics enabled both on the material and on the light. One note though, right now the feature only works for man-made lights, not natural sunlight. Kind of a bummer, but let's hope they add it in the next update. Let's start by placing a point light on the scene. Now you will find a new property called Caustics. Activate it. On the new options, let's increase the intensity to the maximum to better visualize the effect. Next, press I on the keyboard and select the materials that will be influenced by the caustic effect. Just press the toggle to activate it. Now you are able to see this beautiful effect. Let's activate on the water material too, so we see the animated caustics. In daylight scenes like this, what I suggest is leaving the light with a low intensity value. This way it looks like the natural light is creating this effect. And now you can see the before and after images with caustics. It makes a big difference. And number two, D5 Studio. D5 Studio is a cloud workspace in D5 Render where you can keep your favorite presets and other resources to improve workflow and creativity. Right now you can save effects, paths and brush settings. Once you set one up, you just label it and drop it into your personal space. Makes things faster and easier. You can access D5 Studio in the upper left corner of the screen by clicking this icon. This is a big thing and I think it deserves a longer video dedicated to it. So stay tuned because I'll be covering this in more detail in a future video. One note though, D5 community accounts, which are the free ones, currently can save up to 5 presets and do not have access to the D5 Curated. D5 Curated is a section in the D5 Studio which includes preset resources created by a group of designers. And the D5 Pro accounts currently have 10 GB of preset file storage in MySpace and are granted access to D5 Curated. And speaking of D5 Pro, do you know you can get access up to 4 months of D5 Render Pro for free? Just by joining my D5 Render course. This will definitely help you get started with D5 while you are learning how to create realistic renders. D5 is constantly updating the software and I'm adding new videos to cover the changes made. So check the link in the description below to join D5 Render Course. And number three, Section Tool. Another great feature that was long due. The Section Tool is like a magic knife that lets you cut through a 3D model in half to see what's inside. You can enable it by first going to Preference and then Widget. Here you can find the Section Tool and activate it. Now on the top, you will find a new icon for the section tool. You can add a plane or a cube section. On the properties, you can define if you want to apply to a specific layer or not, and you can toggle the option to fill in the edges with the color that you define. Note that every time you move the section, you need to click Preview Fill Color to be able to see the changes in real time. For the final render, this is not required. And next up is Advanced Camera Tool. This is a great new feature. Now you can add multiple cameras and see them on your scene, similar like you do in 3ds Max, for example. Same as with the Section Tool, you need to first activate this option by going to Preference and Widget. Now on the top, you'll see a new icon for Advanced Camera Tool. Let's click there and now select Camera. First, you'll notice that you can move the camera around and rotate it wherever you like. And there's a whole new menu on the right side with extra options to adjust. Besides controlling the exposure, the projection mode, there's a new feature called Aspect Ratio. Here you can define if you want to take a horizontal or vertical render, along with other aspect ratio formats. You can also define the render size, focal length, and camera clipping plane. And number five is new video editing features. 
there are a lot of improvements in the new video editor. Now you are able to add different clips into a single timeline and easily move them around. And along with the new camera tool, you can now render vertical video as well. You can easily create keyframes for animation by simply pressing the K on the keyboard every time you make new changes to the object you want to animate. Again, this is an area that deserves a dedicated video, so I'll leave that to a future video. And number six, D5 Super Resolution Image Rendering Acceleration. This is a super resolution algorithm developed by the D5 Render team that significantly speeds up image rendering. To turn on this feature, go to the top left corner and then Preference. Here, click on the widget on the left menu and enable the D5 SR Image Rendering Beta. That's all you need to do. Now, every time you render an image, you will have this feature enabled. This 4K image took 30 seconds with this option enabled, in comparison to this one with the feature disabled, which took 1 minute and 18 seconds. That's more than twice faster. Let's have a look at both images in detail. We can see there are some areas that look a bit blurred out, but as the name says, it's still in beta. And if you really need that extra seconds, this is a great option. And number seven is Light Source Shape Display. Now you're able to show any of the four available light sources as a shape. When selecting any of these lights, on the right menu, you will find a new option called Show Light Shape. After enabling this property, you'll be able to see the light shape. You can adjust the light size and this shape will adapt as well. And number eight is improved edge effects of grass material. In version 2.4, when you set a grass material, you had about 20 centimeters on the edges without 3D grass. This was a big issue. Now in 2.5, this was significantly improved. Look at this before and after example. And number nine is Optimize GI for vegetation. The global illumination has been further optimized for better effects on plants, with richer and clearer details in the darker areas. And number 10 is improved subsurface scattering materials. There have been two new changes to this type of material. First, the denoising algorithm for real-time preview has been improved. And second, in version 2.4, the subsurface scattering materials are affected by basic light sources and sunlight. In 2.5, an option that allows GeoSky's Skylight and HDRI to influence the subsurface scattering materials has been added to enhance the rendering effect of this type of materials. But be very careful when enabling this feature because it will take more resources from your computer. And number 11, improved clarity of images. Now, the image with resolutions over 2K have been greatly improved. Here's the same render in 2.4 versus 2.5. You can see how one is sharper than the other. And next feature is full screen mode. This is great if you want to really focus on fine tuning some assets on your scene or just display a larger preview. And it's also great if you have a single display and want to work with live sync. This way you can better visualize your work. To make it full screen and hide all the panels, simply press F9 on the keyboard. And next is new sidebar optimizations. Now, every time you select multiple items, all the options you change in the right sidebar will be affected on all the items. And feature number 14, asset optimizations. There have been some improvements with the assets as well. For example, now there's a new parameter for car paint material for vehicle assets. You can customize clear code opacity and clear code intensity. Another new option is the HD filter on the online assets window. This way you can check only the assets that work great near the camera for higher detail. There's also support for displaying search history to view previous searches. Also added search suggestions. You can click on the tags to jump to the search results quickly. The material classification directory has been adjusted added some classifications such as concrete, woven, subsurface scattering materials, etc., making it more convenient for users to find these materials. And lastly is new assets. There are also new assets such as new interior parallax assets, zero fight plants, plant combos, new Asian characters, and also new HDRIs. That was a lot. Let me know in the comments which feature you liked most and don't forget to give this video a like and I'll see you in the next one.